off the top tonight, the dangers of drinking and driving. Good evening. I'm Chase Gallimore. Lacey Harris has the night off. And we've got the grill going at the New Center 25 Studios. Coming up, the pros from Mumford's Place will have some tips for your Memorial Day barbecue. Welcome back. Many flag flyers know the years can really take a toll on old glory. So what do you do when the flag needs to be retired? When well, American Legion in Texas held a flag cremation ceremony over the July 4th weekend, Bonnie Gonzalez was there for the send off. Now the winner of the scratch off ticket stepped up to the counter right here and purchased one of these cards, which I'm going to do. And as the ladies are trying to get a hit on the field, Businesses are hitting a home run. And Victoria Police need your help tracking down a burglar in our hometown, and they've got some green incentive. Detective Thomas Eisman has this week's Crime Stoppers report. And the Victoria County Animal Shelter is now open on the weekend. Officials with the Paws program recently made a proposal to keep the shelter open on Saturday. And a local woman, mother of one of the 11 men killed on the Deepwater Horizon, is speaking out about her recent visit to Washington. News Center 25 Stephanie Cousy explains why Arlene Wisey wants to make sure no one is forgotten. To fly like a bird, it's something men have dreamed of for thousands of years. In 1903, the first flying machine graced the sky under the careful watch of the Wright brothers. Today, pilots take off and touch down at airports all across the world. Airports like the Victoria Regional Airport, home of the Victoria Flyers. There, flight instructors like Jim Arter take beginner pilots from the ground to the air. My personal philosophy is there's nobody I can't teach to fly. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's just a matter of effort. I decided to put that theory to the test. After a series of inspections and some learning about the plane, it was time to hop aboard. The dashboard looked a little overwhelming at first, but Jim took me through a quick explanation of the instruments that made things much more understandable. Master switch on, all that simply does is uh, puts battery power on, on the engine. Okay. Okay. Strobe lights on, it's the light and the tail is blinking. And we're ready to start the engine. Y'all set? One, two, I'm ready start. to go. Then, with a turn of the key, our plane was ready to fly. Uh, you can be a uh, goose and I'll be Maverick or something like that. <laughs> Next thing I knew, we were 1,200 feet above Victoria, flying at nearly 120 miles per hour. Jim took me through the basic maneuvers in the air. With a tight grip on the yoke, I turned the plane to the right and then to the left. And the dream of flying an airplane was coming true. Less than 30 minutes, we took a trip to Port Lavaca and back, and it was already time to land. As we taxied back to the Victoria Flyers headquarters, I reflected on what had just taken place. In a matter of just a few hours, under the instruction of Jim Arter, I flew an airplane. The dream was achieved. Gloves, bats, softballs. All in abundance at the Field of Dreams here in Victoria as softball players converge onto our hometown. We're at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. The High Dominican Panthers, uh, Columbus, Ohio. We're from Simon Fraser University. We're the clan, and we're, our school is on top of Burnaby Mountain in Vancouver area. Softball teams from all over the continent are in our hometown this week to take part in the Association of Independent Institutions Conference Tournament hosted by the University of Houston, Victoria. And as the ladies are trying to get a hit on the field, Businesses are hitting a home run. Local hotels, restaurants, even gas stations are all cashing in as the dollars add up. And it brings people from out of town 
into Victoria, and, and they're going to stay in our, our motels and eat at our restaurants. So we're going to see some big economic impact on that. Just three years ago, UHV began its inaugural season in softball and baseball. Since that time, several different teams have spent multiple nights in our hometown. A stopover most out-of-towners say is not so bad. It's good. It's warm. It's not rainy, so that's, that's an improvement from Ohio. <laughs> it's definitely warmer than back in Vancouver, um, but I like it. We flew through Calgary on the way up, and there was snow, so it's always nice to come down to some sunshine, and the people around here have been great when we've been here and been really nice and everything, so it's been great. So you take the weather, the friendly atmosphere, and the high competition, and what you get is a formula that produces a pretty comfortable tournament. That's a product several organizations have found enticing over the last several years. In 2001, we had an NCAA Division I regional here and had all the, all the major teams from the Southwest in Victoria. And I think that was really the pivotal tournament in the past that, that started getting these others. Since then, Victoria has hosted an annual stop on the Adams Pro Golf Tour and multiple NCAA tournaments. In 2010, UHV will add golf and soccer to its athletic roster. And as the golf balls and soccer balls roll in, we can expect dollars to follow close behind. On a typical evening in Inez, the folks at Smitty's Food Mart expect to sell gas, snacks, and the best sweet tea in the area. Oh, and lottery tickets. It depends on how, how the day goes. Sometimes we can sell up to um, $1,100 worth or more, or it could be slow, like $700. But this past Saturday night was anything but typical. A regular customer at Smitty's walked through the front door and purchased his usual lottery ticket. But this time, he scratched off a winner. I told him it was he was going to win $30 because that ticket didn't pay off much. And he laughed a little bit. And he called me to a corner and he showed me and he won with the number nine. And it said $1 million underneath it. With the winning ticket, Santiago Zarate pocketed $1 million. So I thought I would give this lottery thing a try. Now the winner of the scratch-off ticket stepped up to the counter right here and purchased one of these cards, which I'm going to do. After purchasing the ticket, I scratched off the bottom square to reveal a barcode. Once the barcode was revealed, I slid my card into the machine and I was not a winner. But Smitty's Food Mart certainly is. For selling the winning ticket, the store is eligible for a $10,000 retail bonus. From Inez, I'm Chase Gallimore, News Center 25.